Hey friends, welcome back to the garage. As you can see in front of me, I got my Android replacement head unit for my 2004 FX35, and I am about to jump inside and start pulling out the old unit and installing this. I'll also make a video about purchasing this, and I did a little unboxing video today, so I will make sure I link that in the description of this video. The new stereo actually came with these plastic pry tools. I've had this um, <clears throat> panel off before because I put an aftermarket uh, Bluetooth adapter, which hasn't been amazing for me, but uh, I might as well use these tools that they sent me. And I'm just going to go around gently and try to try to lift this. Maybe today is a no broken plastic day. That would be nice and. Without too much effort, this front piece came off, and I'll flip this over on the back. It looks like there is this connector, which is holding this, <clears throat> well, both of these popped out, but um, these two connectors, and then the front faceplate comes off of this. I already know I'm going to have to reuse these vents because they're not part of the new unit. And now it's time to grab a screwdriver and I will start uh, removing screws. And I'm back with my number two Phillips screwdriver. Like I said, I've had this out once. It's like there's six screws in total. If there's not, I'll find out in just a minute when I get the sixth one out and try to remove it. My wife had a 2004 Volkswagen that also had a CD player and a cassette. So it seemed like maybe that was the year when People were still undecided about the format of the future. So there is six screws loose. And then all of this is going to come out. And now it's probably time for a flashlight to see what's in here. Here is the view um, behind the radio, the factory radio. And let's just start unplugging connectors. So there's one on the display. You know what? I'm going to put this piece of foam here just so I don't scratch up my interior so the gray connector which is on the passenger side has I guess two connectors from the back I thought it was one but there's two connectors they each have a tab that pushes down and, and then the white connector on the driver's side. It also has a tab that pushes down. The antenna connector definitely looks like it squeezes from the passenger side, and it does. And this does match the connector that they sent me, so that's the first good sign. Can't see exactly what's happening here, but I'm gonna go get a small screwdriver. It might be helpful. Yeah, I'm back with a screwdriver. I had this out once, but it was three or four years ago, so I don't remember exactly what I did. I really do not see a tab to release this connector. While I'm back here, I might as well show you the... Um, here's the adapter I installed before. It's from... it's Grom USB 3. This connects to the um, XM radio input or whatever this had from the factory satellite radio input. and. It's supposed to give you Bluetooth input, but I never had great success with it. Um, here's the Bluetooth module, and then this goes to a microphone that's above the camera on the headliner. I have decided, just to make my life a little bit easier, to remove this top um, stack, the display, and this electronic module. It's held on by four screws on each side. It's probably not necessary, but uh, it might make it easier to see what I'm doing back there. And, the few seconds it takes to take it off might make my install that much easier. This piece should just slip off. Okay, now we can get to the radio easier and hopefully see what I'm doing. Yeah, that could be a tab right there. So, inconveniently, the, the, the release tab is on the bottom, which you probably can't get to easily without that display off. And there are four of them. So... I would definitely do this. And now, that is the factory radio 
completely out of the car. This is part of that, that Grom harness that um, I'm not using anymore. So this can come out completely. This is factory antenna. I know that I think is part of the CAN bus. Anyways, let's uh, look at what we got and see how it matches up. Yeah, this this is going away. This is this is you won't have this in your car. Here is the harness that came with the new um, the new system, and I guess I'm going to see what connectors match up with factory connectors. Here's the CAN bus connector. So it's time to see what. So that matches that. Does it also match this? Well, that is kind of scary. <laughs> we have two connectors that are identically sized. So that goes there. That goes there. Those are unique connectors. I am pretty certain. Yeah, those are unique connectors. So I feel, feel good about plugging that in and about plugging this in. I'm going to call this connector A1 and this one, which is identical, A2. And I'm going to say that the connector that it will mate with, we'll call this one A. There's only one of these, obviously. And we'll make sure we know which goes into there. They did send instructions. I'm going to go ahead and pull these instructions up. They are, they're not the best instructions. I think it's one of the challenges with a lot of Chinese products which haven't really been prepared for a mass English speaking audience. They just don't have great documentation and sometimes it's not super easy to read. Here's the dash without the stereo and this is all the instructions I got. They were messaged to me from the seller. So. I've done this, I've done this, I've done all of this. If your car is the low version, the CAN cable is on the screen. I don't know what the low version is, but I think that's what I have. And it says CAN cable, one is all green, another is black green. So I think that this connector goes with the green and black. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. So here's this which I called A1, and here is connector A. So I feel pretty safe that that goes together. I assume all the rest of these are actually for the display, which we may not need. But um, yeah, we have all these cables terminating into three cables. It looks like they want you to make a green cable and a black green cable to the original red. The instructions are really unclear about about this um, and these all these connectors don't have anything to plug into at all so I don't know if there's much else to do but try to power this head unit up which is kind of scary but maybe it's that easy so let's give it a shot I didn't have it with me earlier but I know for a fact this is the antenna connector and it's really unique so it won't go anywhere else so this is standard all car stereos have this type of connector. This is a Nissan Infinity specific thing. And without damaging the head unit, let's see if we can plug this in. It's kind of exciting. They don't give you any instructions either about which cables connect to which part of the, the board. So I think you're kind of on your own to figure it out. This cable matches here, which is the heater control. It makes sense because this is the CAN bus connector. This is the into the stereo. So let's see how that works. I believe this guy should match up to here. And that fits. I'm not sure where this goes. If it actually connects to the car somewhere or if it's supposed to... Um, it doesn't seem to match any of the connectors in the car. Oh yeah, we have one more connector that seems to have a, a mate to the car. So, 
car stereo this extra this I don't know this is like this one but it's got a different color wire um, I think maybe as scary as it is we're gonna power this thing up and see what happens um, best case scenario is this is gonna work and it's gonna control the steering wheel controls uh, worst case scenario you're gonna see a lot of smoke and my car is gonna catch on fire and somewhere in between it will power up and so we got power that's a good sign the car is running here is the unit let's go to auto and AC on I don't see any this is so there are no instructions that come with this it is pretty much uh, you're on your own I definitely don't have any airflow yet well, so far we have a pretty screen that basically matches the dash and nothing else well it wasn't the worst and it wasn't the best it's somewhere in between let's hope this is the this is the solution uh, it seems logical that maybe this little box needs to stay in the car i just want to make sure i plug it in right it's kind of was all by itself but it's got three connectors so we must do something important okay so maybe I'll leave some better instructions but maybe that's all that it took let's try one more time sorry for the noise but I'm excited there's cold air coming out of my car now we just need to get this sound business figured out these vents here have to come off I don't know if you can see this but these vents come off and go on the new face plates and uh, yeah we made some progress it seemed like a project easier to do on the table so I just unplugged everything on the back of the head unit and brought it over here so I can remove these vents and move them over hopefully everything matches up pretty good I think that like The engineering on this is the plastic looks nice. Everything feels pretty good. Um, the instructions are really the only place I would say they could use some help. Kind of like relaxing part because there's not a lot of stress putting three Phillips screws in. Be nice if the instructions were there to say, nope, you don't need these wires. They don't do anything. You do need these wires, figure out where they go. We have those two whole blocks that don't have anything in them. And then my two USB connectors and this mysterious plug that doesn't match anything on the car. While I was at the counter, I plugged in this 4G minus wire to the 4G minus lead and the GPS antenna uh, to the GPS lead. I've done GPS in a couple of cars that didn't have it. And on both occasions, I mounted the receiver up under the dash, and it worked just fine. So that's my plan again here. This is, the I think, the cellular stick. It came with a 4G Plus and a 4G Minus. There's a 4G Plus space in here. So that says 4G Plus, but there is no connector there. So I, I don't know. There's nothing I can plug into. I'm still struggling with getting any sound out of here. But let's see if the air conditioning is working. And we're getting cold air out of here, so that's good. Recirculation is on. Now it's off. It seems kind of responsive. Off turns it off. Auto turns it on. It's definitely, you can hear the engine blowing. So the air conditioning part is working. Well, I'm in the United States. Hopefully we can switch this to Fahrenheit somewhere. Um, so I feel better about that. We have air conditioning. We have a new panel. Now we have a fancy Android screen with no sound and, uh, and air conditioning works again. This sort of notifications working, which I believe comes from the CAN bus. Let me try the back door just for fun. Yep. So that's cool. So as soon as I hear sound out of this, I feel pretty good about it. It's the next day. I was having trouble getting any audio out of this 
stereo and then I um, made a phone call to China and there's actually a setting that uh, you have to switch in order to power the amps and I expected some kind of trouble with the bows uh, but I'll show you where that is so you go to settings here and this second setting and then go to sound and that is toggled off by default and if that's toggled off you see you get no sound and once you toggle it on you get sound uh, the other thing I had to do this power conditioning adjust the like the preamp gain so the more you turn that up the more you sort of preload the the amp stage so I found about 27 lets me run the volume up to maximum without overdriving. Up here on the defrost vent, there's a perfectly flat spot that looks like it would be just right for this defrost, I mean for this uh, GPS antenna. And since it's already got double stick on it, I wipe this off. I'm just going to stick that there. I'm pretty sure that's right about here on the dash. That should see through. Um, should see through just fine. Here is the first view of the uh, unit sitting in the car. It's not pushed back all the way. Okay, I'm still trying to get this SIM card thing figured out, and I'm going to try to find a SIM card that is the right size. This one from Serbia looks like it has the punch out for the right size. Um, so I just want to see it recognize the SIM card. If I have a bad SIM card, then I can order a new one. But if I can't see the SIM card at all, there's something going on with the phone. Hey friends, I know this is kind of an abrupt ending, but most of the other things that I had to figure out on this install are software based. So I thought I'd just stop here. You can see how the unit looks installed in my dash. And I promised to make another video where I go through some of the things I had to figure out in software. I did get the SIM card working, so I have mobile Wi-Fi, and I really want to tell you more about my experiences after using this thing for what's been a couple months. Um, and sorry for the delay in getting these videos posted, but anyhow, I'll tell you more about this unit and what I think and whether I think you should do this in your own car, but at least you can see what it took to get it, uh, get the old unit out and get the new unit in. So. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for my sort of in-depth review and some software tips.